So we are going to be looking at this question under the application of the steady flow energy equation. The question says 1500 kilograms of steam is to be produced per hour with an enthalpy of 3077 kilojoules per kilogram. The feed water supplied to the boiler has an enthalpy of 167.5 kilojoules per kilogram. The velocities of the water at inlet and the steam at exit are 2 meters per second and 45 meters per second respectively. Find the rate at which heat is supplied to the boiler. Alright, so the question is asking us to find the rate at which heat is supplied to the boiler. Basically, what the question is asking us to find is simply the heat supplied per unit time, which you can also call power. So let's pick out our parameters. In the question, we are given mass. Okay, if we are given mass to be equal to 1500 kilograms. Okay, 1500 kilograms of steam is to be produced per hour. So we are given time as well. Time equals one hour, and one hour we know is equivalent to 3600 seconds with an enthalpy of 3077 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, mind you, after the mass and the time, the question says, um, let's go through the question again, 1,500 kilograms of steam is to be produced per hour with an enthalpy. So, the steam is produced with an enthalpy. If the steam is produced, then that simply means this enthalpy is the final enthalpy because what enters into the boiler initially was not a steam. It was just a water, a normal fluid or normal water that went into the boiler and now is to be produced. So that simply means final enthalpy. So you have to be very careful with that. Final enthalpy. Okay. And that is H2. Again, mind you, we are using H2. Or small letter h for enthalpy because this is a specific enthalpy whenever a fluid property is divided by mass you have a specific property so final enthalpy was given as 3077 kilojoules per kilogram so since it is kilojoules per kilogram it means it's a specific property and as such we're using a small letter to indicate it all right the feed water supplied now they are talking about the initial conditions the feed water supplied to the boiler has an enthalpy of 167.5 kilojoules per kilogram so this is now the initial enthalpy okay this is the initial enthalpy that's h1 and it is 167.5 kilojoules per kilograms okay the velocities of water at inlet and the steam at the outlet are so inlet velocity inlet velocity c1 is simply given as two meters per second outlet velocity c2 is given as 45 meters per second now the question is saying um calculate the rate at which heat is supplied to the boiler all right so this is under the application of steady flow energy equation so what we'll do next is to Recall our steady flow energy equations. Okay. Recall our steady flow energy equations. Now, from the steady flow energy equation, from the steady flow SFE, -E, which stands for steady flow energy equation, we have that the heat supplied to a boiler minus the work done is equal to the mass flow rate, okay, multiplying all through by the change in enthalpy which is h2 minus h1 okay plus the change in kinetic energy per unit mass which is 1 all over 2 c2 squared minus c1 squared plus the change in potential energy per unit mass and that is g into z2 minus z1 you have this so this is our steady flow energy equation but for a boiler mind you normally for a boiler there is no height difference and since there is no height difference it means potential the potential energy is going to be what zero for a boiler similarly 
there is not supposed to be um there's not supposed to be a kinetic energy for a boiler because the speed of flow of the fluid is almost negligible but if a speed is given to you like in this question we are given initial and final condition of the velocities then you have to solve with it like that okay normally for a boiler there is no supposed to be speed because the speed is usually negligible as the fluid particles flow in the boiler but if there is a given speed then you have to use the speed in the equation or in the question given to you okay so that simply means we are going to be keeping our kinetic energy of course when there is speed there is kinetic energy again a boiler only adds heat to a system and doesn't do work for that reason work done for a boiler is zero so which means this is actually what zero so the steady flow energy equation for this particular question of a boiler is given as heat supplied equal to and mind you this becomes heat flow rate which is what we're looking for so you're putting dot on top of the heat because of this mass flow rate over here okay this mass flow rate actually converts this whole system into a heat flow rate so you put dot on the um q all right or for the heat supplied so this is now equal to the mass flow rate multiplying or through by change in enthalpy which is h2 minus h1 plus 1 all over 2 c2 squared minus c1 squared all right so with potential energy off and work done off for this given question this is a steady flow energy equation for the boiler so all we need to do now is find our mass flow rate find our change in enthalpy and find our change in kinetic energy so let's start with the mass flow rate now mass flow rate mass flow rate which is m dot simply means mass divided by time okay m dot simply means mass divided by time and in the question mass was given as 1500 kilograms all over uh, okay kilograms all over the time is one hour which is 3600 seconds okay per seconds so this simply implies that m dot which is the mass flow rate is equal to let's obtain this division so the mass flow rate approximately gives us 0 0.42 kilograms per second so this is our mass flow rate mass per unit time so 1500 divided 3600 that gives us a mass flow rate okay with that done next thing to find from the equation let's find our change in enthalpy change in enthalpy change in enthalpy and that is simply um okay let's simply use change in h for that which is h2 minus h1 so change in enthalpy is equal to the final enthalpy from the question which is enthalpy of the steam was given as let's pull it up a bit so from the parameters we choose final enthalpy h2 was given as 3077 initial enthalpy h1 was given as 167.5 kilojoules per kilograms so it means that the change in enthalpy okay is h2 3077 minus 167.5 mind you they are all in kilojoules per kilograms all right so change in enthalpy is now equal to so let's obtain that subtraction So 3077 minus 167.5. Okay, let's put it in decimals so you have this. That gives us 2909.5. So we have change in enthalpy to be 2909.5. Okay, in kilojoules per kilogram. So keeping this aside, so mind you, from the equation so far. For this particular question, from the steady flow energy equation, we've gotten the mass flow rate, we've gotten the change in what um the change in enthalpy, we've gotten the change in enthalpy. So we are next to find the change in kinetic energy. All right. So I'm flipping the book now, and also keep in mind. Let's go back to the parameters. Keep in mind that the initial velocity was given as 2 meters per second whereas the final velocity was given as 45 meters per second so let's move over now to find the change in kinetic energy so change in kinetic energy okay let's call that um, delta kinetic energy 
energy change in kinetic energy is equal to we said one over two c2 squared minus c1 squared and that is equal to one all over two c2 mind you c2 was given as 45 meters per second okay so we have 45 meters per second not forgetting square their units together okay minus two meters per second okay all squared so the change so the change in kinetic energy is now equal to one all over two into let's obtain 45 squared so 45 squared gives us 2025 meter squared per second squared mind the unit as well minus 2 squared over here obviously will give us 4 meter squared per second squared and we have this so 2025 minus 4 this simply means that the change in kinetic energy is equal to 1 all over 2 into 2025 minus 4 that simply gives us 2021 meter squared per second squared so we simply multiply this result by 1 all over 2 so let's multiply and see times 0 0.5 which is same thing as 1 over 2 and that simply gives us 1010.5 so the change in kinetic energy is 1010.5 meter squared per second squared okay so this implies that change in kinetic energy equals 1010.5 meter squared per second squared and we have all of this so we need to now impute these values into our steady flow energy equation now remember the steady flow energy equation for heat supplied in this boiler okay the rate of heat supplied always put dot here to indicate rate of heat supplied this is equal to the mass flow rate which is found multiplying all through by change in enthalpy h2 minus h1 okay plus the change in kinetic energy 1 all over 2 c2 squared minus c1 squared and you have this so all you need to do now is plug in these values inside this equation okay so this simply means all right let's uh, not forget we had change in enthalpy change in h we obtained this value earlier let's pull it up a bit okay so not forgetting we had change in enthalpy to be 2909.5 so you put it back there so change in enthalpy we got it already to be 2909.5 kilojoules per kilograms we also obtain the change um, we obtain the change in kinetic energy to be equal to okay this is here already 1010.5 meter squared per second squared and our mass flow rate and our mass flow rate m dot we obtained mass flow rate let's pull it up a bit And we obtain mass flow rate as 0 0.42 kilogram per second okay so mass flow rate will obtain 0 0.42 kilograms per second so let's plug all of this into this equation now when solving problems like this you have to mind the unit your unit has to converge okay especially in thermodynamics you also have to indicate to your lecturers you know what you're doing if you observe the unit of change in enthalpy here is kilojoules per kilogram but the change in kinetic energy is giving us meter squared per second whereas the mass flow rate is different so at the end of the day they are having different units inside this formula but you have to show them that this is actually correct now how is this so is by carrying out this analysis by also involving the units so you don't just solve questions in thermodynamics you also involve the units and show all the a mathematical relationship between the unit that converts it into a unit of power because at the end of the day we are looking for heat flow rate which can also be called power so what we need to obtain need to have a unit for power okay with that said the heat flow rate q dot is now equal to so let's put in the parameters now all the values 
the mass flow rate was given as 0 0.42 but not forgetting the unit kilograms per second multiplying through by change in enthalpy change in enthalpy gave us 2909.5 kilojoules per kilograms also not forgetting the unit plus change in kinetic energy which gave us 10 10.5 meter squared per second squared now let's see how this converges so heat flow rate is now equal to so this means i'm going to be using 0 0.42 to multiply everything in this bracket so let's start with 0 0.42 multiplying the change in enthalpy so i have 0 0.42 times change in enthalpy is 2909.5 now we also multiply their units together the unit of mass flow rate is kilogram per seconds now multiplying kilojoules per kilograms you keep this aside plus similarly the mass flow rate multiplying the change in kinetic energy so we have 0 0.42 multiply 10 10.5 okay um, now the units multiply each other kilogram per seconds multiplying kilo meter squared sorry multiply meter squared multiply meter squared per second squared please just mind that okay so heat supplied q dot is now equal to so let's obtain 0 0.42 multiplies 2909.5 so 0 0.42 multiplies 29 09.5 so we have 1221.99 so that gives us 1221.1221.99 now observe the units notice that kilograms cancels kilograms so i am left with what kilojoules per second so this is simply kilojoules per second so for this aspect this is unit of power which is kilojoules per second this is correct now now on this other side let's obtain this multiple plus again we have 0 0.42 multiplies 10 10.5 so 0 0.42 multiplies 10 10.5 so that simply gives us 42 4.41 so we have 424.41 but observe the units okay the unit is the most important thing now here we have um kilograms multiplying meter squared per second squared so not forgetting this is kilogram per second multiply meter squared per second squared so that gives us kilogram meter per second square so let's just append times one all over seconds here for this um kilogram per second okay so now what is kilogram meter squared per second square I'm, I'm going to provide a detailed analysis on this now we have kilogram meter squared per second squared times one all over seconds but what is kilogram meter squared per second squared this is the unit of work now how is this so let me explain this you have kilograms you have kilograms meter squared per second squared this is a unit of work work is defined as force times distance but what is force force itself is mass times acceleration due to gravity multiplied by distance so this means work done is equal to let's balance this up by dimension analysis by dimension analysis unit of mass stands for the kilograms okay times unit of acceleration is meter per second squared times unit of distance is what meters so meter times meter gives us meter squared so you simply have a meter squared all over okay sorry so work done is equal to so you have kilograms meter times meter is meter squared all over second square so which means this unit is actually the unit of work and since it is a unit of work the unit is always what joules so kilogram meter squared per second squared is actually in joules all right so it means we can express all of this in joules then remember there is per second say so that means it's actually joules per second hence the heat supplied okay the rate of heat supplied is now equal to 
sorry, 1 to 1.99 kilojoules per second, plus we have 4, 4 to 4 4.41, this becomes in joules per second. All right, so we have two things now. This is in joules per second, and this is in kilojoules per second, which means the only thing we need to do before we can add these two up is to what? Convert either of them. Either you're converting this to kilojoules, or you're converting this to joules. So let's simply convert this to joules by dividing the change in enthalpy with 1000. So if we divide this value by 1000, this simply means that heat supplied or the heat flow rate is simply giving us 1.221.0, oh sorry, 22199 kilojoules, sorry, it becomes joules, sorry, please pardon me for that. It becomes joules per second. So all we needed to do was to divide this by 1000 and we convert it to joules per second. All right, so plus 4 to 4.41 joules per second. Now we can add this result up and that gives us the answer of that given question. So the heat flow rate is giving us 1.22199 plus 4 to 4.41. So that simply gives us 425.63 in joules per second. So this is the answer, or this is the heat flow rate required to supply the um, heat to the boiler. All right, guys. So like I said earlier, if the boiler has inlet and outlet velocities, then you use them in the steady flow energy equation for a boiler. But normally, for a boiler, there is no velocity and there is no change in um, potential energy, which means there is no height difference. But if it is given, then you have to use it. All right. Please, guys, if you are new to the channel, do well to encourage this work by subscribing, liking our videos, sharing your thoughts in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks and cheers.